Coming up on 20 years, the original Xbox offered countless classics. Oh my goodness, I remember playing Halo 1 and 2, Crimson Skies, Project Gotham Racing 2, Knights of the Old Republic. You may have your favorites. You know, uh, there was just lots of excitement about the original Xbox and that, you know, that, that top 10% that was released on the console. I'm not talking about any of those classics today. We're gonna look at the worst of the worst for the original Xbox. This is an ongoing series. I've done this with other consoles and I look forward to doing many more. So I'm gonna pick five of the worst games on the original Xbox, share them with you today and explain why they're on the list. You may wanna sit back, relax, grab some popcorn possibly. Let's take a look. When this game was first announced, I was shocked. I was like, Aquaman, really? I don't think of Aquaman as like a top tier superhero. He's definitely more B tier. And oh boy, this game doesn't do him justice whatsoever. When you first boot up this game, it screams budget release. And oh my goodness, even, I don't mind the comic book scenes, but using in-game graphics, which aren't really good, it looks terrible. And so you're Aquaman and you're out to save Atlantis from impending doom. And so you're swimming around a lifeless looking murky city, doing simple button combos, taking out villains, it's really a button masher and really boring. So rinse, repeat, there's 21 stages total. I found the camera to be a little wonky. You're, you're always trying to adjust to find just the right position. And, and that was the problem with a lot of games of this era. But when it comes down to it, the combat underwater just doesn't work. And so, you know, you can summon animals to come help you, but it's just really boring. Uh, you know, is it broken? No. Are you going to want to play this? No. It's just really bad level design, bad character design, and I just didn't find myself wanting to play this whatsoever. But, you know, uh, even the summoning the animals just, to me, doesn't save this game from being one of the worst releases. It was released on the GameCube as well, also planned for a PS2 and Game Boy Advance release, but it didn't happen because of poor sales. I wonder why. Sometimes you have a really cool idea, an idea that you want to succeed and unfortunately is poorly executed. And that's what I think of when I think of the game Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki Warriors is a strange fighting game. You're, you're essentially a fight promoter uh, for a troop of Kabuki Warriors trying to travel in Japan and pretty much you're trying to appease to the crowd. They tip you in which then you can uh, pay for your travel expenses. And the better you do, the farther you can travel. And it's just, it's just, just a, it's a broken fighting game in which you're essentially uh, trying to defeat the opponent, which comes down to button mashing. There are some different moves or there's some different defensive stances. I just found that aggressively attacking uh, the, an opponent you typically would win. So I did pick this up back in the day. Watch this over and over and over again, hitting the same button and taking out enemies. It's just, it's just really broken. Once you defeat an opponent, you then can trade actors with them. Uh, that part's kind of cool. Uh, other than that, though, when it comes down to it, the fighting is just broken. The graphics don't look great whatsoever. Uh, the Xbox was capable of so much more. Stiff animation really, really destroys a good idea. I want to like this game. But when it came down to the gameplay mechanics, I could just button mash, repeating the same attack move over and over and over again, taking out enemies. That's not fun. Paying full price for this, I would have been really upset. I did pick this up, uh, used, and found myself not enjoying it because it's just repetitive. There were so many awesome racing games of the time period. I think of like Mario Kart, Wipeout, Gran Turismo, uh, just to name a few. And Pulse Racer tries to combine kind of a Mario Kart style racing game with a futuristic racer like Wipeout. And what do you get? <laughs> Look at the character models. Oh my goodness. So bad. Putrid. Just really generic looking. 
He looks dumb. I think I'll play with him. All right, so then you choose your car. It's definitely going for that kind of Mario Kart looking feel, I guess, for the cars. But when you actually race, it's kind of hard to explain on video, but uh, you don't have a sense of speed whatsoever. You, you, it's hard to like really stay ahead. Uh, even the generic icons for the power-ups, just, just really boring and dull. This is just definitely a, a budget release. I mean, the original Xbox, had so many amazing racing games. And you know, th this was trying to cater to a, a different audience and it just doesn't work. You know, it, it falls so short of being fun. You know, there's some different modes in this game, but you're not gonna wanna play this. This is, this is truly a, a terrible and dull game and an example of how not to design a game. And I'm sure there was a small development team and I know this wasn't a big budget release, but it's just plain bad. It's just one of the worst racing games on the original Xbox. I can't think of anything worse. Look at those models. Oh, oh man. If you want to play one of the worst games, check this one out. Otherwise, avoid it. Multiplayer fighting games also were getting popular at the time. And Stake Fortune Fighters tries to tap into that audience, offering a four-player arena fighting experience how does it work actually when i first put it up i was pretty excited seeing the kind of the hand-drawn artwork of the characters one of eight characters to choose from and so i decided to go with void should have been called avoid and so the problem is when you go around the arenas here it's hard to track down and find opponents and the arenas themselves the level design is terrible it's got choppy animation uh, you know, even the frame rate stutters and when it comes down to it the combat is just a button mashing repetitive mess it is a uh, delayed reaction too when you press a button it takes a little bit to activate uh, an action and it just doesn't work whatsoever for even the four player mayhem this is a really really broken fighting game one of the worst fighting games i've played and definitely one of the worst fighting games on the original Xbox. It is just a mess to find people. It's not fun to play. While I do appreciate kind of the unique character designs, it, it doesn't implement them whatsoever. Avoid this terrible train wreck of a fighting game. I have a pretty funny story about this game. I remember shopping at a software Excedra in Redding, California and seeing this on the shelves. There was no media information about it at the time. Sometimes games just got sneezed out. And as you're about ready to see, you're gonna find out why. As a tie-in to a comic book done by the same company, uh, Drake of the 99 Dragons is definitely going for that cartoon Batman animated series look. An ancient artifact stolen and you are to avenge your clan. While I don't think this is a bad looking game, it comes down to the aiming and camera connected. It just doesn't work. Your animation of your character looks stupid. Kind of takes me back to the days in which I was playing with G.I. Joe action figures and you would twist the body around and, and contort the body into weird movements. Uh, it just reminds me of that. It just doesn't work. Uh, the aiming is just not accurate whatsoever. Uh, you struggle to move your character around and make simple platform jumps because the camera is moving all around because it's connected to the aiming. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I laughed when I played this game back in the day and I knew it was bad and really just stopped playing it because it just wasn't fun at all. And, you know, I, again, it's not a bad looking game. I actually think the graphics work rather well. But, you know, seeing the game in movement and playing the game, this is just not how you do uh, control or camera. It's a good example of, of how far we've progressed, at least most companies, and how much better game design is. Oh my gosh, avoid this at all costs. Worst game on the Xbox ever. Oh boy, it was tough to narrow it, this list down to five, but I did it and had a lot of fun. Did I miss one? Comment below what you think should have been on this list and why, as I might include it in a future video if I do a follow-up to this series. 
Oh man, this was a lot of fun, and boy, these games were bad. I want to thank everybody for the ongoing support. If you're new to the channel, you may want to consider hitting that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a great day.